Okay, so one of the most important skills you need to be successful at any level of math is the ability to factor, and this is especially true in algebra. So my question is, can you factor? Well, if you can factor, simplifying this rational expression should be pretty easy, but it's not the only way to deal with this problem. So we're dealing with a fraction where the numerator and denominator are polynomials, and by definition, we would call this a rational expression in algebra. But uh, this problem is basically this problem with numbers. So if I gave you the fraction 10 over 30, and I said simplify this fraction, of course, the answer would be 1 third. Okay, so we always want to simplify our fractions in mathematics, whether they're uh, numeric or they are rational expressions. So you got to know how to factor, but again, that's not the only way to do this problem. Matter of fact, let's take a look at the actual problem. So we have 6u to the 6 minus 24u to the 4th minus 10u squared, all this over negative 2u squared. And what we want to do here is simplify this expression. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I want to walk through how to simplify this uh, rational expression step by step. As a matter of fact, I'll show you a couple different ways you can approach this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here is our problem. Again, we're dealing with a rational expression, and we want to simplify it. This is a very common type of problem that you're going to have to deal with in any uh, algebra course. But let's take a look at the correct answer. So when we simplify this rational expression, your answer should look like this. Negative 3u to the 4th plus 12u squared plus 5. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus for your ability to factor or your ability to simplify a rational expression. And as I indicated, there's a couple different ways you can uh, think about this problem. So let's go ahead, and get, go ahead and get started right now. All right, so the first thing, let's just kind of get a couple basic things down here. Let's take a look at two numbers, 7 and 8. Now, what are the factors of these numbers? Now, you might be saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, 7 is 1 times 7. Okay, 1 and 7 are the factors of 7 because 1 times 7 is 7. So any uh, two numbers such that you multiply them together, the product of these numbers, when we get back to this number, these numbers here are what we call factors, right? So the factors of 7 is just 1 and 7. But how about 8? Well, we have 1 times 8, but we also have uh, 2 times 4. Okay, matter of fact, we can even write this as 2 times 2 times 2. So all these are factors of 8. Now, anytime you have a number, okay, where the only factor you have is 1, well, we call these numbers prime. Okay, when you have a number where you have factors other than 1, like 2 and 8, well, this is not prime. So sometimes in uh, algebra, when we're dealing with uh, rational expressions or polynomials or things that we're trying to factor, you can't necessarily be guaranteed that you're going to find factors. In other words, this thing right here, when we try to break this up into some uh, respective factors, well, it's not guaranteed that we're going to be able to do this because this thing could be prime, right? So you just don't know, but you always need to try. Now, let me show you the first um, kind of way you can think about doing this problem. But this uh, particular way requires uh, you to be able to understand how to work with powers and exponents. So what you could do is you could kind of divide in to each one of the uh, terms of the numerator this negative 2u squared. Okay, so for example, we can break up this uh, one fraction into three separate fractions. So you could have 6u to the 6 over negative 2u squared plus negative 24u to the 4th over negative 2u squared. 
minus 10u squared uh, over negative 2 uh, u squared, right? So that would be plus negative, actually. All right, so you could think of this problem this way. And then when I divide a 6u squared by a negative 2u squared, if you're pretty good to go with working with powers and exponents, you're going to get a negative 3u to the fourth power, right? So I had to think about that for a second, which, of course, is the first term in our answer. So if you thought about the problem in this manner, that's perfectly fine. But what I want to do is use our factoring skills, and hopefully you know a bit about factoring. And if you do not, I'll give you some tips on how you can improve to solve this problem or to simplify this rational expression. All right, so let's take a look at an easier version of this problem. So we have 4x cubed plus 12x squared over 2x. So it's effectively the, a very similar problem as the one we're going to try to solve here. But let's see if you can actually simplify this. Okay, now you could do this problem in the same kind of way that I just uh, set this uh, technique up, right? You can kind of break up the fraction into its own individual fractions. But what I want to do is talk about factoring out the greatest common factor. So when you have a term, especially a polynomial, what you always want to do is try to factor out a greatest common factor, okay? So this is a big, big deal, and this is really the first step in learning how to factor anything is to be able to factor out the greatest common factor. So hopefully you can identify the greatest common factor in the numerator, but let's go ahead and take a look at how we can find that. So here we have 4x cubed plus 12x squared. So we're talking about the GCF, right? The greatest common factor. These words, these terms mean something. Greatest, common, and factor. So here, uh, let's take a look at all the factors of 4x cubed and 12x squared. But we want to take a look at this in terms of what common factors these two terms have. Now, hopefully you're saying, hey, Mr. Two Math Man, they both have a 4 in common. And that is absolutely correct. So in terms of the number part of this expression, they both have a 4. That's the largest number they have in common. So 4, in terms of a number, will be the greatest common factor. Okay, so 4 is a factor of 12, and 4 is obviously a factor of 4. Now let's take a look at the variable part here. So we have x cubed, which means x times x times x. And here we have x squared which means x times x. So they have what? They have two x's in common, which, of course, we would write as x squared. So they have a 4. That's the greatest common factor in terms of a uh, their numbers, the number part of these polynomial terms. And then they also have an x squared in common. So the GCF is 4x squared. So we want to factor out the GCF. This is always the first thing you want to do. So when we factor out the GCF, which of course is 4x squared, well, what are we left with? Well, now, if we look at this 4x cubed, this is 4 times x times x. So we're left with 1x, right? So that's going to be inside of our binomial. And then over here, we had a 4 and an x squared. That's part of our GCF. So what's left is 3. So you have the GCF times x plus 3. And you can always multiply back in uh, here. We can uh, take this 4x squared times x, what are we going to get? We're going to get 4x cubed, and then 4x squared times 3, we're going to get back to 12x squared. So anytime you're not sure if you factor something uh, correctly, you can easily just multiply those factors and see if you get back to the answer, okay, or to what you're trying to factor. All right, so again, the first thing you always want to do is factor out the GCF. So when we factor out the GCF, and here is our problem, so here in this uh, uh, expression, we factor out the GCF, which is 4x squared times x plus 3. Okay, now here we have this 2x squared. Now these are common factors. Let's go back to this simple problem here, 10 over 30. You can think of 10 over 30 as 1 times 10 over 3 times 10. Now, anytime you have common factors, i.e. the same uh, factor in the numerator and denominator, you can simply cross cancel. And what you're left with is the simplified fraction. Same thing here, 4x squared, this is multiplication. So these two things are factors. So we can um, take this 2x and divide it into this 4x squared. 
So let's go ahead and do that. And when we do that, we're going to end up with a 2x. But let's break this out a little bit further. So 4x squared, and we have this 2x down here. Now, obviously, we have this x plus 3. We can't do anything with that because this is in parentheses. But this 4x squared is, is the same thing as what? 2x times 2x. That is 4x squared over 2x. So the 2x is cross cancel. That leaves us with the 2x. So uh, you can write this as 2x times x plus 3. Or you can use the distributor property and multiply that 2x back in. So we got 2x squared plus 6x. All right, so this is basically what we're going to be doing with this uh, second problem. And the reason why we're doing this is to review our factoring skills. All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is have you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I know so uh, I know for a lot of you are like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, why do you always stop your uh, math videos uh, to always ask people to subscribe to you? Well, I need your help. It's that important. I've been on YouTube for a long time. I love teaching mathematics. And on my channel, I basically focus from basic math to advanced math up to about the calculus level. But they're really what um, you know, I kind of focus on is the math that you're going to learn between the middle and high school math years or like the beginning of college, right? So I don't really get into too much like elementary kind of mathematics, um, or the, although a lot of the concepts I um, talk about certainly applies to that, to that level of math. And if you're going into calculus, well, you know, I do uh, touch on a lot of those more advanced math uh, concepts as well. But uh, for every single video, what I try to do is to make math clear and understandable, okay? And I really encourage people to stick with math even when it gets difficult. You can definitely learn this stuff. But uh, in order to be truly successful math, you need great math instruction. So check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And what we're talking about here is factoring. You got to know how to factor to be successful at any level of uh, mathematics. But in algebra, you kind of start learning this in pre-algebra. So if you're in algebra one, algebra two, pre-calculus, I teach factoring in all of those respective courses. And if you're not even a math student, well, then check out my math skills rebuilder course. I'll teach you basic math, algebra, geometry. I teach you a ton in this course. It's a great course for those of you that just kind of want to brush up on your math skills. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, finish up this problem. We'll actually, kind of start the original problem because we um, took a look at how we could break this up, you know, in terms of uh, individual fractions. And that's one way to approach that, uh, approach this problem. And it's perfectly fine to do this problem in that manner. But as soon as I kind of, you know, made a little bit more interesting uh, denominator down here, well, then you still need to be thinking about the GCF or the greatest common factor. So let's go ahead and practice our factoring skills and factor out the GCF when the uh, numerator. Okay, so here we have 6u to the 6 minus 24u to the 4th minus 10u squared. So what do you think the GCF is going to be? Well, if you can't determine the GCF, this is a pr probably a pretty good indication that you need to go back and review uh, factoring. And you always start with the GCF, okay? and i.e. the greatest common factor. All right, so over here, you can kind of look at your polynomial and just think about it. Let's just think about it in terms of the numbers first. So 6 is 2 times 3. 24 is 2 times 12. I'm thinking about common factors, right? So I could have other factors here like... Um, uh, uh, you know, 1 times 24, but that's not going to help me out. I'm thinking about common factors, and then 10 is 2 and 5. So 6, we don't really have too many options here other than the 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. So we have a 2 that's common here and a 2 that's common here, and we can also have a 2 that's common here. So as far as the numbers are concerned, 2 is the greatest common factor, but we have variables, right? So the lowest power of u is u squared. So we do have a u squared in this u to the fourth, right? u squared times u squared is u to the fourth. And then we have a u squared in this u to the sixth. That would be u squared times u to the fourth. Now, I'm talking about other things here to determine the uh, greatest common factor, i.e., your knowledge of powers and exponents. So we're really talking about overall, you know, algebra knowledge and skills. So again, if you're struggling with any aspect of this problem, you know where to uh, go to find help. All right, so uh, two u squared is the GCF. And when we multiply two u squared by what's left in this uh, 
with these terms, right? We're going to get back to the original problem. Now, this does take practice. So 2u squared times what gets us back to 6u to the 6? Well, we know if I factored out u squared, I'm left with a u to the 4th, right? And then here, I'm also left with a 3 as a number. So 3u uh, to the 4th is what we're left here. And you always have your GCF outside of uh, parentheses. So this is minus 12u squared, right? Because we're left with a 12 and a u squared. And then here we have a minus, we're left with the five, and there is no u left. All right, so uh, 2u squared times 3u to the fourth minus 12u squared minus five. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this this way. So here is our original problem, and we're gonna factor out the GCF in the numerator. And of course, you can see we have a lovely 2u squared right here and a uh, 2u squared right here, but this one is negative. So basically, it's this thing divided by this thing. It's the same thing, but this one is positive and this is negative. So positive divided by negative is simply a negative one. All right, so you could leave the problem this way. So if this was your final answer, that's fine, but it's always best to kind of, you know, tidy this thing up and distribute uh, this number back into the remaining polynomials. So negative one times three u squared is negative three u to the, I'm sorry, negative one times three u to the fourth. I apologize if I said anything wrong here. I apologize. Obviously, I'm doing a lot of talking in real time, but uh, let's go ahead and multiply this negative one times three u to the fourth. That gives me negative three u to the fourth. Negative uh, one times negative 12 u squared, and negative times negative is positive 12 u squared. Then negative one times negative five is positive five. All right, so there's definitely no doubt that factoring is one of the most absolute critical skills in algebra and in mathematics. Matter of fact, I'll go as far as saying you're not going to be able to really, you know, pass a math, uh, pass an algebra course if you are having a tough time with factoring. So um, when it comes to factoring, what you want to do, here, I'll just give you a quick uh, tip here. So factoring in algebra, all right? So first of all, obviously, make sure you know how to factor numbers. But what you want to do is get the GCF down. Make sure you know how to factor the GCF. And then you need to make sure you know how to factor polynomials, okay? Especially uh, trinomials, okay? These are three-term polynomials. And these are broken up into what I call case one and case two type of situation. So you got to master how to factor uh, trinomials. And then beyond that, you need to uh, be able to factor special case situations. Okay. I'm talking about things like the difference of two squares. There's all kinds of special factoring rules you got to need that you need to know in order to be successful in algebra. And then after that, you need to understand a bit about group factoring. So there is a lot to learn and you got to kind of do this in order. So if you don't understand the GCF, start here and then kind of work your way this way. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.